Hello friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how I made this a custom macro keyboard and how you can make one yourself. So let's get started. So what are we covering in this video? I will be covering how to design your own PCB, how to get your PCB, soldering all the parts onto your PCB, making, designing and printing things like custom keycaps and also the case. And lastly, the coding. So let's dive in with designing the PCB. We are gonna be using a free tool called Easy EDA. This is an EDA software that lets you design your own custom PCBs. So I'm going to hop into Easy EDA STD edition. As soon as it loads, I'm going to say new project. And I can say keyboard tutorial. Oops. Save. Now in here, this gives me a schematic file and also a PCB layout file. So first we have to start with schematics. We can go here to library and we can look for the parts for the, the parts for this project. We'll be using a PyPico and some default keyboards, which is the links to all these parts, the files and everything will be down in the description below. So let's search for a RASP. Very high Pico. You can always check parts right here. It gives you an accurate representation. This one looks right, so I'm gonna say place. I'm gonna place that right there, and I'm gonna hit escape to get rid of that. Now I'm gonna go back to the library, and now I need to look for keyboard switches. Keyboard switch. Switches, Oops. keyboard, switches, switch. I can look through these. I probably won't find anything here, so I could probably go to user contributed where there are a lot of files that were contributed by people before. So I'm just gonna use the Atomegu switches. These look about right here in the profile as well as in the um, schematic right here. I'm going to say place and I'm going to place it right over here. Now I know I'm going to be using 12 switches, so I am just going to um, copy and paste them, but I need to make sure the layout is correct. So one, two, three, four. Oops, let's do three and then down so we can get rid of this one. We can take all of this, copy, paste, paste. Paste, paste. Okay, so now we have all the switches laid out. Next step is to give it connection pads, which means we need to give or tell the schematic file about each connection. So we can use these tags or these um, special keys to do this. I am going to start with 3.3 .3 volts. I can hit R to rotate and 3.3 .3 out is right here. So I'm going to give it right there. I'm going to rename this to 3.3 .3 volts. I can use the wiring tool to wire it up. Want to make sure this is right because otherwise your um, layout won't be made correctly. Now I'm going to copy this and I am going to start pasting it. And this needs to go on every switch. Now that we have all the 3.3 volt tags put in place, we can start by putting all the GPIO pin tags. So I'm just gonna take it, rotate it by clicking R and I'm gonna start putting the tags in place. Two. Okay, so this button is not needed. And I can just start by labeling it zero, one. And easy EDA realizes this. 
and it'll start giving me the next ones. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now that this looks right, we can come over here and make our tags again. So we're gonna start with zero. Okay, now that I have made all the connections, I am going to save it. And after saving, I am going to hit this button right here. And it's going to ask me um, if I want to check some nets. I'm going to say no for right now. And I'm going to get my layout size. Here, I get some basic settings I can change. I can make it a round rectangular um, shape. I can do copper layers too. Um, start X, start Y with height. These all can be changed later as well. I'm going to say apply for right now. And as you can see, all the electronics just came here. We can start by doing a rotate here to have the pins of the Raspberry Pi or the port sticking up here. I'm going to put that right over there. And now I have to look for the switches in the order and then place them. Skipping, um, not putting it in order will just make life harder when coding. So I'm going to start by setting two. So that's 12. So 12 would go somewhere here. Now that this step is done, I'm going to go over to the route and auto route. It's going to check the server once it's unable, unavailable. I can say, okay, so the board outline is now closed. Go cancel and let's go check right here. Doesn't seem to be closed. Go click that there. That still looks good. So I'm going to say route, auto route, checking unavailable. Now I can say run. So it says attempted 73, completed 73, failed zero. So we are good. Now that our PCV is laid out and all the tracks are connected, we can move on to the next step. Before you move on, if you want, you are you can add text here and customize it to your liking. Like I can say Arnav. And I can say here. And here I can change some of the settings. Like if I wanted um, which layer I want it on. So I can say top silk layer, which is the white layer on top. Um, font family, I can change that. I can change the size of it. So let's say I want it to be bigger. I can say three, and that would make it bigger. Line width also, I could say 0 0.3. That would make it wider. Once, it, once you like the look of your PCB, you can come here over to file and export Gerber file before you export, remember to save. And let's try that again. Oops. Export Gerber file. Here you can say yes, if that's your final export. Once that's done, you can download your Gerber file and then head over to JLC PCB. Over at JLC PCB, you can say add Gerber file, upload the Gerber file that you just downloaded. And here is going to show you somewhat of the rough cost that it's going to take. So as you can see, it's two layers. That's the size of it. 
and there's all the settings you got. You can change the PCB color. So I got it in black. So that's what it would look like. Just remember some settings take longer than others in terms of getting it. Here you can do save to cart and get your PCB. So now that we have designed our PCB and gotten our PCB, we can move on to step three, which is soldering all the components to the PCB. I started by soldering my Pi Pico to my PCB and one switch just to test if it works. Once I knew that was working, I moved on to solder all of my switches onto my key PCB. After that, I hopped into Onshape to design the keycaps. Designing the keycaps were really easy. I went in through a few iterations, printing them out each time as I went. This was on my FDM printer, the Ender 3. Once I liked a design of a keycap that fit and worked, I went over to Dienza to print it in the resin. After printing it in resin, I also hit it with a coat of golden spray paint, which gives it this amazing golden look. This is the same golden as what I painted my Iron Man helmet. So after the keycaps were done, the next step was getting a case on. Since the pointed pieces of the soldered part was right below the PCB, I didn't like it to scratch my keyboard or my table or my mouse pad. So I went ahead and designed a case again in Onshape. Once that was done, I went over to my school, printed it on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon in an amazing black, which kept the color profile as black and golden. Okay, now we're on to the last step, which is getting some code onto the Pi Pico. So what you're gonna wanna grab is your Pi Pico and an appropriate USB cable. Make sure the USB cable can transmit data because that is really important. What you're gonna start by doing is plugging your USB end of the cable into your laptop or PC. Now, plugging in your Raspberry Pi to the other end of the cable should be easy. Just make sure you press the button on the Raspberry Pi as you're plugging it in. And we're gonna start by nuking the Pi. So what you wanna do is get the nuke file. It will be in the description on GitHub. And you wanna drag and drop it into the Raspberry Pi. You're gonna wanna wait. You can unplug the Pi. Unplug it back in. And you're gonna see this. After it's done nuking, you want to take the Adafruit Circuit Python Raspberry Pi Pico and put it into this file. Give it some time to upload. Once it's done uploading, you can unplug the Pi and plug it back in, or it'll just boot up. Once it's up in the lib um, folder, you want to take everything from the Adafruit HID file and put it in there. You can drag and drop or copy paste it. Once this is all in here, you will see a code.py file. You can click on that and it'll open it in the in your um, code editor of choice. What you can do is now take the code file from my directory and upload it um, into the Pi. You can either edit the file as you want, or you can just replace this by deleting that code file. Oops, 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 oops. You can delete that code file and you can add this one onto the Pi Pico. Once that's transferred, you're all good to go. You can now change this code to your liking by just double clicking on this and checking out the code and changing these 
values, the CC dots, and I will have documentation all in the description and on the GitHub, so you guys can look at the documentation and change it how you like. If you learned something new today, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And can't wait to see your guys' PyPico-based macro keyboards. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.